Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. Um, another trunking video, this one on central office trunks or CO trunks. They're very simple. Um, they're still out there, so you know if you still need to order uh, one FBs or one for business lines, analog lines, the kind of phone lines that are in your house, um, these kind of trunks are useful. So let me show you how they work and how they differ a little bit from typical ISDN or SIP trunks. Okay, so. We're going to go ahead and add the trunk. So I'm going to say trunk two. It's a CO trunk. Outside call, I'll just leave that as is. Uh, core 13, because that's my lucky number. 302, because 301 is assigned to my first trunk, which is ISDN. I don't want the display. I do want dial access. This is for testing purposes, and you can turn this off and on anytime you wish. Uh, night service, I don't care. Q length, I don't care at this point. Incoming destination, I'm going to make it my station, but you can make it anything you want. You can make it a VDN, you can make it a hunt group, you can make it whatever you want, but I'm going to make it my station. All right. Uh, digital absorption list, I'm going to say one, even though I'm not using that, but I'll show you how that works later. Trunk type, this is a loop start uh, because the, the trunk or the, the circuit I have plugged in is a loop start trunk. And once you have it set up, because it can be uh, loop start, ground start, auto auto, you know, whatever. There's, it, it just depends on how it's delivered to you. 99% of the time, you're going to get ground start trunks from your carrier, but you can definitely plug in loop start trunks uh, if you have them. You can do a trunk gain if the volume's too low, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but again, look this up in the documentation. It comes in very helpful. I'm going to measure this internally, uh, which means I can run a BCMS or list measurement report on my uh, system to allow me to see how it's doing if there's any been you know disabled calls whatever uh, da, 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 da. what else oh I'm gonna show you this when I do the testing part but I'm gonna leave this disabled so you can see what happens on the display of a phone when you get an incoming call um, and you can also set your outgoing Annie which is not recommend it's kind of like spoofing but don't don't use this but receive analog incoming call id is where you're going to turn on caller id if it's enabled on this trunk all right i leave this stuff alone but again you can you can change this dependent upon how fast your trunk answers the loop start line or, or ground start line or you know co line uh da, 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 da. again some more some more uh, thresholds you can set and then we get to the ports page and since i'm on an 8300 001 v4 uh, a one. I'm gonna call this local CO, and I'm gonna submit it. And there you go, stat trunk two. And you can see it's in service idle, maintenance busy. Yes, release trunk two, and it's already released. But it was going through its maintenance test. The next thing you need to do at this point is plug in your trunk, and or plug in the phone line. And this can be terminated back on a, on a 66 block or a 110 block or however it's terminated. But you, since this is an 8300, it needs to have an RJ11 connector into the port, which I just did there. All right. So now uh, on to testing. All right. So to test this trunk for inbound calls, because we know we hooked up the trunk. We know that um, we're ready to go for inbound calling, because I'm going to show you how to do outbound calling here in a moment. But... Let's test the inbound calls. Now take note of this TAC right here, TAC 302, okay, and the name of this trunk, outside call. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list trace TAC 302. So that way I can live monitor both on my system as well as my phone, as you can see there. And I'm going to call this from an outside. I'm going to call it from my cell phone. All right, so when I call it, you can see it comes up outside call 302 on the telephone, and you can also see in the list trace what trunk number and what, what member, what trunk group and member number I'm coming in on. Okay, so that way you know, I'm going to go ahead and answer this. I'm going to drop it. So that way you know the trunk works for inbound calling. Now, to set up for outbound calling, we have to do a few things. We have to set up uh, the ARS, we have to set up route patterns, and I, I mentioned in the beginning that we were going to do digit absorption. I'm going to ignore that for now. That's more advanced, and we'll deal with that later, but at least I get to show you how to do this uh, for an outbound call. All right, so let's do that next. Okay, so we want to enable caller ID uh, for incoming calls on this trunk, and we want to set up outgoing for uh, users to be able to make calls onto this trunk. So we're going to go into the trunk itself, 
And we're gonna go down to page two and receive analog incoming caller ID is currently disabled. We're gonna enable that. And the way you enable it is you gotta pick an item. There's only four. 99% uh, of the time it's Belcor, but you can try other things. You can go up here, it gives you some options like replace restricted numbers, yes. Replace unavailable numbers, yes. And you can, again, look at the documentation to, to see how to configure that. But I leave those as no, uh, just cause, you know, I don't care. I, I don't care what, you know, if it's restricted, it's restricted, big deal. If you really want to, you could send it to a VDN saying, hey, we don't take calls from people who like to block their phone numbers. Now go away. All right. So once I submit this, I am ready to test the call. So we're going to go back in. We're going to trace station 1000. And we're going to test our calls. All right, here we go. I'm going to test this, uh, see if our caller ID now works. I'm going to run a trace, and you're also going to see it on the phone. So, ring, ring, there you go. All right, see? So now, your trace shows you the phone number and the name that it's calling from, and since my cell phone, uh, it shows just the state, that's all you see. But you would get the name of the individual or company calling you, plus their phone number. You can see it in the trace, you can see it on the phone. So now you know your caller ID is working and set up properly. So let's set up outgoing or to enable my phone to make an outbound call on that trunk all right so let's do that now all right so let's attempt to make a call without setting anything up all right so the first thing you're gonna see when I go off hook and dial 9 is you hear the wave off tone and you see I get a denial event why well look real close and you can see my caller core is restricted now I did this on purpose <clears throat> and the way to do that is you go look at the station that's trying to make that call. And you can see I have core 1, and I know that my core 1 is a restricted uh, list. So I'm going to make it 13, my lucky number. Let's see if I'm lucky and able to make a call. So list, trace, station, 1000. All right, I'm going to hit 9. Oh, look at that. I get dial tone. So I'm going to dial uh, 412, beep. Oh, look at that. Denial again. Now, this is, I'm doing this on purpose, guys, because I want you to see the type of tracing you can do to, to troubleshoot an issue if you get a user saying, hey, I can't make a phone call. All right, so you can say, denial event 1751, and oh, by the way, I'll put a description in the video down below uh, to the document that gives you these denial event error codes and what they mean. All right, so look for that down there. Anyway, back to this. You could say, no AAR, ARS route pattern, preferred setup, basically saying, it can't find anything when I dial 9412, which is Pennsylvania. So we're going to go in and we're going to check our ARS, ANA, 4. Remember, don't do 9 because 9 just gives you access to the ARS table. Remember? Display feature, 9 right here. ARS access code is 9, so I don't need to look up 9. Display, ARS, ANA, 4. And I can see 412... There is an entry. Well, why isn't it working? Well, you take the next step and you go, okay, we'll go check route pattern four because I'm expecting 10 because it's a local call and I'm going out route pattern four. All right, so I change route four. Oh, and look at there, nothing. So we're going to add it, local CO. And I'm going to go down here and say trunk two because that's my trunk. I'm going to give it a zero because that's kind of the standard. And you can type in 412 and hit submit. All right, so now list trace station 1000. Let's see if it let's see if it works. Nine, four, one, two. Ooh, I'm not denied. I guess I should have beeped that. And there it goes. Call works. There's my cell phone. I answer the call. Oops, I just hung up on myself, but that's okay. And you can see it now works. All right, so there you go. That is how you set up outgoing trunks. You got to have your trunk group. You got to have the ARS, which is right there. And you got to have an entry for everything you're going to do, whether it's your home NPA, your, your international long distance. You know, refer to the documentation on ARS, please, because um, you want to get all those right. And you want to have your route pattern. 
which is route four and there it goes so I'm going out trunk two, going out my MPA which sends it out and that is the call flow all right so let's review I ordered an analog loop start circuit for my carrier just one and I had it installed and I terminated it into my phone room then I plugged it in using an RJ11 cable into my MM711 card into my S8300. Now for other systems it may be different, but since I'm focusing on my S8300, that's how you install it. Then I went in and installed my trunk group or added my trunk group. And as you can see here, I added the port that I plugged my, uh, my analog circuit into for my port one, which was the first one. And I set up uh, caller ID, which I should have showed you that first. Uh, as you see here, it was disabled. I set it to Belcor. It may be something you got a few choices. Just try it until till it works. Make sure you order that service from your carrier. And then I tested both inbound and outbound. And the way I did my outbound is I had in a 412, I had an ARS entry or an automatic route selection entry for the table here. I also had a route pattern, which I have here to make outbound calls. And let me go, let me give you a brief overview of how both of them work in a graphical sense. All right, so here's the inbound. The call comes into the PSTN, which hits the central office, which is where my cable is connected physically to my S8300 and my MM711 port. I then created the trunk group, as you saw in my, my previous screens. Uh, and termed it to 1000, which happens to be my station. You can term that to anything. You can term it to a hunk group, a VDN, a station, whatever you want, uh, to however you're gonna process those calls. And actually, I'll show you how to term this to a VDN so we can make an auto attendant, and I'll do that later. All right, and then when we tested the call, you saw it come in uh, to my station, and we are good to go. Now, let me show you outbound. When I make an outbound call for my station, I dialed 9, which is a feature access code to get to my ARS. I dialed 412 and my phone number because I was dialing a local call. ARS sends it to 412 and says, hey, 412 needs to go out route pattern 4. And I go down to route pattern 4 and route pattern 4 says, hey, you need to go out trunk number 2, which happens to be my CO trunk group. That trunk group then sends the call out the line to the central office, out to the PSTN and connects my call which happened to be my cell phone. But as you can see, this is a simplified way of understanding how the call flow works, both inbound and outbound, and you're ready to go. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It took some time to make, but I enjoyed making it uh, because it basically shows you how to set up inbound and outbound calling specifically to a CO trunk, but this also works on ISDN trunks and SIP trunks. Um, and when, when we touch on those, I'll show you the specifics of how those work. So. Again, guys, thank you for your comments. They've been great. Uh, keep providing suggestions on things you want to see, anything you're stuck on. I'll be happy to help. Um, comment.